Zip Monday. Not only is it March, but it just happens to be National Crafting Month, guys. So that's really exciting. Woohoo! A whole month for all you crafters. Yeah. It's the best month in the world. So we're excited about that. And because we're so excited, we are uh, launching a great coupon code for you guys today. Naturally. That is yeah. going to be a valid, I think, for quite a while in March. I think the first two weeks in March is when we are um, being able to promote this amazing sale. And that's just because it's National Crafting Month and so much is happening. The Cricut Joy was launched on Sunday, which we have already got to purchase and dive into some awesome things. There's going to be some really cool videos coming out, some great uh, Q&A, some awesome little uh, lives for everybody. Mm. So definitely hold all your questions until those amazing lives and videos because I know we're about to burst with excitement from the joy. But uh, just in honor of everything happening that's going to be so much fun in March, we are giving you guys $20 off of our amazing yearly membership using the code MAKE at checkout. That's M-A-K-E. And it's amazing. If you don't know who we are or what we do, we run an amazing uh, membership website for die cutting crafters. So whether you guys have a Cricut, a Silhouette, a Brother Skin and Cut, whatever a joy. die cutting a joy. Whatever die cutting machine you guys have that works with SVG and PNG cut files, you will adore the membership. Not only do we have over 2,000 digital cut files, but for yearly members, which is the one that's on sale today, we also give amazing fonts every month. We have a back library of over 250 fonts, as well as some awesome free e-courses, a commercial license, so much good stuff with that yearly membership. And then every member also gets awesome uh, free printable guides and access to our members only Facebook group. So ask any and all questions you guys have about the membership. Let us know where you guys are visiting from. What's the weather in your neck of the woods? And I'm excited. I'm excited. What's going on? Let me see here. 77 and sunny in Florida. Ugh, that sounds nice. Hello, everyone. Let's see. Right now it's 48 degrees and pouring the rain. So all week, like down. it's supposed to gradually get warmer here. I think tomorrow is supposed to be in the mid 60s, but it's supposed to be it's supposed to like rain, like 80 or 90 percent chance of rain of most of the week. Yeah. So that's that's a thumbs down, you know. Yeah. But. It's okay, because we're not even going to look out the windows. We're just going to pay attention to the amazing craft we have in front of us, which if you guys haven't already noticed from the amazing thumbnail, we're making the adorable little on-the-go tic-tac-toe little bags that uh, we launched last week or the week before, I think. Was last week. Last week? Okay, yeah. Yep. So we launched these last week. We're making them today. We have never dipped out on a live stream before. So they are, there probably will be some hiccups along the way. The one thing I thought of before we went live that I remember from other dip dive videos of ours is that it always fogs up our overhead cam. So Becca will do a little bit of movie magic and maybe switch around the angles for you guys. But we're going to try and get, give you guys all the information we possibly can. There's quite a bit of supplies in today's project, mm -hmm. which is why I have pre done a lot of things so we don't have to get super bored watching me cut vinyl or watching me paint little wooden circles so I do have a lot of it prepped uh, so I'm really excited but I hope that you guys are excited let me know if you have any questions about today's project about the sale on the membership I will go through all the supplies that we've got and then I'm gonna dip dye first so that that can just be out of the way I need to get this boiling pot of water off the table it's already making me nervous and then I will go into a uh, design space showing you guys everything that we have going over there but do we have any questions back if I missed anything so not a question but Christy said hello everyone I wanted to share for the group if you buy $100 of merchandise with 651 vinyl you can get the pin pin tool for $5 yeah. I'm not sure if this is always the case but I wanted to share that's amazing yes I Thanks think so much it for is. sharing that mm -hmm. uh, it's but I don't think they advertise it right. but after you um, have everything in your cart there I order probably every other week from 651 Vinyl. Uh, then down below, it'll say, um, if you spend over $100, you get that for free. It does have to be in your cart. So if you know you're gonna spend $100, go ahead and drop a pin pin tool in your cart and it'll automatically drop it down to five bucks, which is insane. So 
I see a question here. Miss May says, what is the cost of the yearly membership? Miss May, that's a great question. So we have three membership tiers, the monthly, the six month, and the yearly. The least expensive is the yearly and you actually get the most perks with that. So we have a $20 off sale today. Uh, the catch, I guess you could call it a catch is what Tanner says, for our amazing yearly membership is that you do have to pay for it in one lump sum, but that gets you 365 days of crafting and you don't even have to worry about it, you know? So that's really awesome. So the membership is $191.88 regular price. So what would that be? $171.88 yep. um, with the coupon code today. And that's for a whole entire year of crafting. And that's not January to December. That's 365 days from the day that you join. So you get, you know, unlimited uh, cut files and fonts and, and you know, downloadable um amazing printable guides and access to the members only Facebook group. We hold nothing back from our yearly members and they pay the least amount. Uh, before the sale, uh, they pay $48 less per year being a yearly member than a monthly member. So just think about that as well. It is definitely an investment, just like you guys invest in your amazing machines. Invest in us and we will inspire you guys and educate you guys to create amazing things and become very confident crafters that can tackle any problem you're faced and that's what we love to do here okay well guys continue to ask some amazing questions I'm gonna start diving into the supplies we have because again there is a ton so what we've got going first is a pot of boiling water so it does not have to be boiling but it needs to be pretty darn hot and make sure that you read the directions on whatever dye that you chose today we are using oh my gosh I forgot the brand of this is it tulip I don't know if this is tulip or not. So this is, well, I shredded the top off, of course. So this is the dye that I chose today. It is tulip. I thought so. Yeah. So this is like the tulip powder dye. So you, there's di different kinds. You can buy regular tie dye. You can buy writ dye, which is like a liquid in like a little bottle. Or you can buy powder dye. So it, it really is personal choice. Make sure you read the full directions on whatever dye you're using. Uh, one great, great thing about this one is I was actually able to get two different um, I don't know, sets of dye out of this one pack. So this pack at Hobby Lobby was $3.50 and I actually got to use it twice. So I got to dye things two times, two batches. So all that I did, I'm sure you guys can guess, is take all of the measurements on here and just cut them in half to make sure that I had uh, the exact amount I needed for two batches. So let me tell you what that comes down to. If you get this dye, which is uh, 1.76 ounces, I chose pink. Um, everything cut in half, what I have on the table here uh, for my dye is 64 ounces of water and that comes out to eight cups so it's really easy to measure out eight cups which i guess you can guess if you double that 16 cups go in there uh for one huge batch if you're doing like a bunch of t-shirts and things like that so for little uh bags like this we just uh you know cut the batch in half so that's eight cups of water really really hot it says steaming so as long as she's good and hot it'll be totally fine and then dye wise, there was three tablespoons of dye. So of course, cut that in half, uh, 1.5 tablespoons. And then two tablespoons of salt for half a batch, so four for a whole batch. Just make sure you read those directions there uh, to make sure you are doing everything correctly. So in these little containers is our dye and salt. So this is what we will need for our dye, uh, as well as an old rag you do not care to get stained. Um, we also have some vinyl gloves here and I also if you guys see me I am in a, a pretty dirty smock here but this is what I wear every day and I don't normally wear it on the live so forgive me today if I look a little bit messier with my smock on but I am not even going to take a chance to get some of this dye on me and you guys shouldn't either so wear clothes you don't care about or wear a smock make sure you have gloves because you will be getting your hands uh, dirty in this dye we also have a spoon and a little chip clip and this guy's really good if you want to uh, do some angles. So if you can see here, uh, he's like a horizontally or diagonally uh, dyed and you can do that by like kind of uh, attaching him to the corner there and I'll show you that later. It just depends on if you would like that or not. Okay, then of course we have some paint because we're going to be painting our little bitty wood chips. And before I go on, have, have I missed anything? Rory said, would it ruin my Cricut Maker if I made a Cricut Joy card on it? Do you mean... No, it won't. No. It will not. Absolutely, Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No. Go, go crazy. Go nuts. No, that'll be totally fine. 
Um, I know everybody's so excited about their joy, though. I know. Tanya that... said, what is a Cricut joy? Well, guys, it's a little bitty Cricut machine that cuts. I want to show it to them. It's so tiny. Becca wants to show it to you guys. Where is it? I don't know. I don't even Are know. Are we going to be in trouble? It's over here. Uh... It can cut vinyl, iron-on, and paper. Uh, that's about it that it can cut. Uh, it's really cool. It's super tiny. It has a very uh, little blade in it. You have to basically buy everything new. It takes little mats, little blades, takes its own, which you could make it uh, do your own type of vinyl. Preview. It's a little preview. A little preview, guys. Here's the Cricut Toy. It's Diddy Bitty. It's so stinking cute. Uh, we have some videos and live streams coming out for it uh, in the future, so get pumped for those. Yeah. But I think I think that Becca is the most excited out of the Makers and Learn team. Guys, I almost <laughs> cried when I saw it. It is so cute. Listen, it is it not adorable? I mean, it's the cutest thing ever. It's teeny tiny. I want to put it in my purse and take it home. Listen, mm -hmm. I'm sure we I'm sure she will. It'll just be missing from the uh, studio one day and Becca will, will again just be like someone keep broke in and only stole the Cricut Joy. <laughs> So, you know how it goes. But it's super cute. It's a little cricket, and we can't wait to uh, dive into how to create a ton of things with that little guy, some comparisons, some Q&As, and things like that, because we want you guys to get all the info. Okay. I'm going to keep on keeping on. We also need these little baggies. So these are from Hobby Lobby as well. They are five inches by six inches and they're drawstring pouches. So here it is from Hobby Lobby. Um, I can show you guys that later on the B cam, but they're just little drawstring bags. They come in a pack of four, which is perfect for this. Uh, so we only bought one little pack there. We also have these little wood circles from the wood pile, which is how we made our little uh, X and O chips today. And this, this is a font project. We're using two different fonts that just launched for Makers to Learn, which is amazing. And that yearly membership is the only membership tier that you can have access to these fonts. And that's the one that's on sale today. So grab your yearly membership with the code MAKE at checkout for 20 bucks off. Uh, so these are little hey, wood Rachel, pile. real quick. Yeah. Uh, Christy said, can we sell the project that you're making? <gasps> so Christy, that's a great question. So only our yearly members uh, get an amazing free commercial license with their membership tier. And what that means is instead of being able to create something and give it to a friend on their birthday or make it for yourself or, you know, make it for yourself, uh, for your family, for like vacation t-shirts and things like that. With their yearly membership, we do give you guys that free commercial license, meaning you can sell the projects that you make using our cut files and fonts. And that's amazing. So you guys do have um, the ability to sell what you make with that free commercial license. Um, and that's very rare for a membership site to give commercial use licensing. They usually give personal use licensing. So you usually won't see that. So that's a great question, Miss Christy. You absolutely can, which is an amazing perk. Absolutely. Did I miss anything else? No, Sissette just said, hands down, the font is the best thing. She uh, listen, loves our font. Me and Sissette, I love the fonts too. Fonts are my favorite. So that's what we're using today. Two different ones, two new ones, because we do launch 20 fonts a month, which is amazing. Is it 20? 20. Wow, that's a lot, guys. 20 a month. 20 a month, which is awesome. It's incredible. Okay, so <clears throat> wood pile, little round circles, um, a really... So something you need to pay attention to, which I didn't, and I actually messed up. Um, I bought my little drawstring bags and I bought my uh, circles, but I didn't have a clear, uh, you know, like picture in my mind of how big I wanted my little actual tic-tac-toe little diagram here to be. So I brought my wood circles home and they were too big for my pouch and for my little... Um, image here. So make sure that you think about that. Think about how large you want them. And I would definitely recommend getting a multi-pack like this. It makes it a lot easier to uh, choose which uh, size you want if you already have multiples available. So that again was wood pile from um, Hobby Lobby $2.99. There's three different sizes in there and we use the largest size which was only 1.26 inches. So that's not very large and we love those. They're very thin so that's what we're going to be using today. Okay. We have the Cricut Mini Easy Press. We have our Easy Press mat. We've got some black uh, HTV. We have the uh, Teflon sheet just in case and a baby Easy Press mat. I think I've went over everything. It's a lot. I think so. We have a pouncer for the paint. I already told you guys about that. Mm -hmm. So now what we're gonna do, since this guy isn't steaming near as much, I bet the B cam is gonna be great. So we're gonna switch over to there just because I don't want it to cool enough uh, that it won't you know, work as well when we start to dip dye. So I'm gonna squeeze this over here, put it in the frame. Oh goodness, look at here, guys. So boiling 
ish water very hot very steamy i've just got a towel down to protect our work surface um and then here is our little um our little tubs of salt and dye so we're going to take our salt here and just shake our salt into the water okay now we have our little spoon here because we're just you know cooking on today's live apparently <laughs> you know Speaking of cooking, Wayne up. made your sausage balls last night for dinner. That's what really? I was eating this morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. So yummy. Those are delish, guys. Those are good. And they're so easy. So easy. They're so easy. And they're, oh, they're good. Great for a party, you know. Or dinner on Sunday night. Hey, I don't <laughs> judge. That sounds great to me. Okay, once you have all the salt dissolved, guys, now you get to throw the dye in there. So I wish that this was like stainless steel lighter so that you guys could see the coloring so you probably won't be able to but it's really cool so here's my little dye here and if you look it's like kind of not really a color it looks like you know? kool-aid yeah it looks like kool-aid so if i drop it in here oh you, you can see that you can see it bit. yay okay so you just throw that in there just like the salt and just mix it around yep so just make sure this is dissolved and then we will uh, put some gloves on and make sure, you know, our jewelry and our watches and everything are covered up or better idea, take those off mm -hmm. and then we'll be able to dip dye. So again, this is a pretty big batch and of course this is halved. So it would be a lot bigger than this if you were doing t-shirts or something like that. Uh, but for the sake of the video and everything, I wanted to cut the batch in half so it was a little easier to manage and things like that. So. I'm gonna grab some gloves here and put them on. Rachel, Sherry just said, I have a confession. I was talking to a crafter who was telling me who they follow on YouTube. I did not mention MGL because I don't want them over here getting my fabulous projects. Oh my gosh. Sherry, you know. I'm both just, happy and appalled. Just, just <laughs> the fact that you're that honest about it. I know, it, I love it. Like, it makes my day, you know, like, not a lot of people could say that. And I honestly think that is like the highest form of flattering. When yeah. you love someone or... So much you don't want to share uh, them. Yeah. So, yeah. That's how I feel with, you know, some things in my life as well. Um, Susan and said, help awesome. can't get vinyl to stick on Converse tennis shoes. So, Miss Susan, are you using an iron-on vinyl or a regular vinyl? Mm -hmm. Let us know. Good first question. Now, okay, so there's some different ways you can do this. So for this guy, I dyed him all over, and because I crinkled him purposely, it kind of made him a little bit tie-dye, how it's a little bit darker in some areas and lighter in others. And then for this guy, I uh, dip dyed him, you know, sideways, I guess, at a cool little angle there and made him um, half and half there. And then for the guy that we have finished here, I ombre him. So I had it darker on the bottom and a little bit lighter on the top. So I'm not really sure what I want to do today. If anyone has a preference, I can do whatever. I think I might want to do this one diagonal as well uh, because I want to show you guys how you can use your little clips. So here's the fresh one. And the first thing that I do is I rip these tags out because those tags are a little bit annoying. Uh, so I just rip my little tags out and now we can dip him. You can have your little uh, clip close by. And now uh, again, he's just like cotton canvas material and this is, uh, it's got dye in it. It's got the um, salt in it. So we're just gonna dip him in, okay? So I'm just gonna dip him a little bit in. And the key to this guy is to make sure that you are, um, Getting, getting him as saturated as you can because sometimes it doesn't want to stick at first. Sometimes uh, it's really easy not to see like the front. So like I'm looking from the back, so I'm looking this way. So uh, as often as you can, flip it around so you can see both sides and make sure that you're saturating both sides of this. And just keep dipping until you are, you know, at the corner that you want or, you know, to your desired um, color and then the um, rule of thumb is that the longer you leave it in the dye, the darker and the more vibrant the color will be. So you can have it in there for like two minutes. You can have it in there like 30 seconds. Look at my tag. How did the tag get in there? What in the world? <laughs> I didn't even notice that. It's just that. floating around. Yeah, so be this pretty. has been in there for like 10 seconds. 
So, you know, do whatever you'd like to do. If you want to dip it and forget it, you can place it in there at the angle that you would like and then scoot it up to the side here and use your little chip clip and clip it in there. And then you can take your spoon. Oh, that's genius, Rachel. Take your little spoon and make sure you're getting it and all the little nooks and crannies that you want. And my favorite thing about dip dyeing is that it's not perfect and that's what I like. Right. I mean, right. It's never just kind of like, you know, a lot of things in crafting, it's not perfect and that's just the beauty of it. There, It takes away a lot of um, anxiety about feeling like you're gonna fail because even if this looks terrible, someone will appreciate it, you know? So that's um, what we're gonna do. Okay, so our friend who is having trouble with vinyl on her Converse yes. is using black iron on vinyl. Okay. Uh, she's using her mini press mm -hmm. and she said she's tried both the second and third temp Okay. Um, do you have any tips? Um, let's for see that. here. Make sure that you are uh, getting good pressure in there. I imagine it's on the side of your Converse. So I would say that unless you stuff the shoe with like socks or something, it'll want to fold in there. Mm -hmm. uh, so depending on where it's at, stuff your shoe to make sure it's good and sturdy. Give some good pressure on that mini easy press. Uh, make sure you're seeing some bubbles before you remove that. So I was saying, uh, make sure that you're not like worried about it, it being on there too long yeah because it's not you really yeah. can't burn htv trust me i've tried uh so because uh, they're just canvas and they're it's super easy to put htv on canvas it really is yeah so uh maybe stuff your shoes um yeah make sure you don't peel it off super hot give it a few minutes uh and do a little warm peel there if you don't see bubbles if you don't see it sticking just keep ironing on when in doubt just keep going it doesn't necessarily mean you need to do a higher heat maybe you just need to do it longer but yeah let us know how that works for you so guys let me tell you after you have it soaking for uh your desired amount of time all your all what you're going to do is wring it out just a little bit and since this one is diagonal um be a little more careful with it. What I would do uh, for this guy is take him to a sink immediately. With the other ones, I can like wring them out with my hand and make sure they don't drip and take them to my sink. But because I don't want to kind of get dye all over this, I want it to stay in the um, design that it is. I would have your sink close by or take your pot closer to your sink and just let water run off it so that you don't get uh, any dye where you don't want dye. And once you rinse it, rinse until it's clear, then throw it in the dryer. It's literally that easy. Uh, since since you're not wearing these, it's not a shirt or anything, no need to wash them first. So after you rinse it and throw it in the dryer, you're good to go. You will have this, which is so cute. It's done. I like that it's a little bit imperfect. I like that it's a little bit uh, darker in some places than others. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove all this from our table and be able to jump into design space. So Becca, are there any other questions? Well, um, I'm going to move it over to design space sure. while you're doing that. But um, there was a comment. Okay. Miss Teresa said, first live in a while, I finally talked my husband into agreeing to let me purchase the Spring Summit. This is my first summit i can hardly wait teresa it is also my first summit so it is. we'll do this together i'm very excited it's gonna be so much fun guys um, i'm gonna drop the link for that if you guys haven't got your summit passes yet do that it's gonna be the best time ever it is march 21st 20th yep. 21st 21st and 22nd 21st and 22nd that yep. weekend and we have so many amazing crafts, guys. We're gonna have two guest um, crafters, of craft course. teachers, yeah. excuse me. Um, it's gonna be lots and lots and lots and lots of fun. We love them. We yes. love summits. They're so much fun. They're jam packed with really cool uh, teachers and classes and fun um, giveaways and prizes and chit chat and it's really good. So if you guys have never attended one, definitely attend one uh, because you don't wanna miss that. Like you just, you wanna know what's going on with those amazing summits. And if you guys happen to be busy a weekend that the summit is ha uh, happening, you're not gonna miss a thing. You do get free HD copies of those videos because you signed up. So you get those forever, which is awesome. Okay, had to get me a drink of water. So I hope that you all have enjoyed uh, dip dyeing. I think that was super fun, really easy. Uh, a lot easier than dip dyeing a shirt. And of course you guys can do that as many ways as you would like to dip the whole thing in, let it sit for 45 minutes, let it sit overnight, just go crazy with it. You know, you can do it different colors. If you wanna do a red, white, and blue, you could dye 
the top half red and the bottom half blue, you know, and leave the middle white on a t-shirt or something like that. There's just a lot that you can do uh, with dip dyeing and I really enjoy it. I think I like dip dyeing more than tie dyeing because uh, like I mentioned, there's just no pressure. You don't have to uh, rush. You don't have to feel intimidated with how, you know, like all the colors and where to place them and where all your rubber bands go. I don't, you know, some people love tie dyeing and Tanner and Courtney have a knack for it. All my tie dye horrible at it. All my tie dye t-shirts have looked like a turd. When I was I gonna say it. they're brown. Yeah. All of the colors will run together, and I'm telling you, I have cracked and in my blood, and I just can't make a dang tie dye t-shirt. So that's hysterical. Are you looking at these comments? Let me see. <laughs> the the first comment was basically, I, I don't know where it is. How, how many of you keep a color scheme of your Cricut items? Basically, in other words, like. Do you yeah, guys have the yeah, same yeah. color? Everything. Uh -huh. Some of these ladies are not buying easy presses and mini easy presses because they don't come in lilac. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I love your commitment to lilac. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. That um, is hysterical. But you are missing out. I'm, I'm just going to Oh, 100%. Like that that like mini I, easy press is I, I so feel fantastic. sorry for you. You guys have got to yeah. get it. Listen. Ooh. Ooh. Put some vinyl on it. Put some vinyl on it, guys. Get some washi tape. Wa just yeah, washi, washi tape. tape. Get your Cricut craft knife and cut that washi tape right there at the seam. Guys, do we have to do a whole lot about covering your dang mini easy press that and washi hysterical. tape? That is hysterical. Oh, my heaven. You guys are cracking me up. I love you guys. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, the uh, two amazing fonts that we are using today is Kayla and Opal. So again, these are new for our amazing yearly members. So uh, they came out last week for you guys. And I have a couple of little uh, guides here to help us out, which is my Becca. I, oh, did you, were you using it? I thought you were just talking with your hands. You I can gonna... have it. What, what is it? It's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we have to share a mouse, yeah. guys, which hopefully will be fixed later. But I was we gonna both... highlight something for you because oh. I thought you weren't using it. Sorry. No, you're fine. You're, no, you're, you're fine. fine. Okay. Okay. So the square here is representing our little uh, drawstring bag. Now the key here is to uh, measure below your drawstring. So I just have the actual bag measurements. Um, so like where I'm going to put iron on. So uh, there's a little seam there that you can see on the little pouch there and I just measured uh, around that. So that was four and a half by uh, 4.75. And then up here, I have another little uh, guide here, which is the exact shape of my wood circles. So that is 1.26. So these two are my little guides that will help me size um, my, my fonts today. So the font for our X's and our O's, we have used uh, opal here. So I already have all of these, um, look at me erasing stuff. I already have all of these here for us today. So I'll walk you through how we created all of this. So all of your fonts that you have downloaded and you use for Makers Go Learn will be in your uh, font section, or excuse me, in your text section on system fonts. So all will be a little bit harder to find and of course it won't be in Cricut. So if you go to your system fonts, that is where all of your MGL fonts will be. So we're gonna search for Opal. And you can see it right here. So this is a really cute font. We're only using two letters of it today, but uh, don't fear because Becca also has a really cool um, project from that launch that we are creating with this Opal font. So oh, I do, yeah. Yeah, so we're using just an X and an O. So we're just gonna type out um, O. And I don't want that O, so I'm gonna caps lock. There we go, that's the O that I'm looking for. And then guys, I'm gonna click off of that and get a whole nother text box. You know how I am. I am very <clears throat> anal about that for some reason. Then I'm gonna type me out an X and then I'm gonna take it and drag it over here. And now this is when you would go and grab your shape, get a circle, just because their text is also um, black, I'm just gonna change this to a lighter gray. Then I'm gonna go up to uh, the width here and type out 1.26, which is the exact size of our little wood rounds. Uh, so that is a great visualization here in Design Space. So you've got that going. Now you can take these one by one, and when you see that happen, it goes behind it. Bring it up here. It goes behind that circle there. All you have to do is take that circle, drag it behind there, and then go up to the top layers panel, and you can see where it says arrange right here. 
and you can click send to front and it'll send that O right to the front here. Um, and now you, all you have to do, you don't even have to worry about measuring or anything like that. All you have to do is size it until you think it looks good. And that's a great thing to be able to do here. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of it when you can basically see your blank in design space. So we love to do this. Okay. So I like the O that looks good to me. So I'm going to place that over there. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the X. They don't necessarily have to be the same size, just as long as they look good on the circle. So our X's and our O's uh, might uh, be different dimensions, but that's okay. So that looks really good too. So once you have those two sides, you can go ahead and erase your circle. And uh, you, I think you only need nine of these per, um, you know, per tic-tac-toe game, if my math is correct, which probably is not. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and do five each. So all you have to do, there's several ways to do it. You can double click and click duplicate, or you can duplicate from your right layers panel. So you go all the way to the top next to delete, and you can click duplicate. And that's two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my O, okay? I'm going to go my O, duplicate, two, three, four, five. So there you go. That's literally as easy as it is to size and duplicate our X's and our O's for our little uh, chips here. I think I call them chips. I don't know what you would call them. They're X and O chips. I think that's a good name for them. Okay. There you go. Yeah. X and O chips. Yeah. Hope that makes sense. So uh, once you have those, I'm actually going to delete them so that we don't have too much crowding up our um, design space canvas here because these are the ones we have pre-sized uh, for us. So these are the ones we use today. And then uh, we will use our next font, which is uh, Kayla. Now this font is pretty small, pretty thin. Um, I would recommend this for larger projects. I was kind of just taking a shot in the dark using this on such a small project. But I will encourage you guys, if you have a relatively new blade, this cuts wonderfully. So I did cut this, I wanna say, three weeks ago. It does not feel like it was that long ago, but I bet it was, Becca. Yeah, but, it's been a while. Uh, I cut this three weeks ago and it, did every, every one of the letters, maybe all but three, peeled up on me. And it was just because that our blade was really dull. I was using more pressure. I was using the correct material setting. Sometimes those things just happen. So just make sure you have a nice blade there, not one that's too sharp, not one that's too dull. If you can find that sweet spot, you know, I hope you can. So because we have this size for us, and we did this the exact same as a circle, except we came down here and we unlocked, if you can see that, we unlocked our uh, dimensions here in order to make the sides different. So then we just sized the width and the height to the exact width and height that we measured our little baggie. And now we're going to go back to our text and I'm going to go up to the font here, go to system and I'm going to type out Kayla. There it is. And just a little PSA for all of you uh, new uh, Cricut desktop users or the people that are using this downloadable version, the new version. Uh, whenever you do download a font to use in a project, uh, it likes, let's say if I was in here right now and I was looking for a font to use on Makers Gonna Learn, I found one and I downloaded it. It's not gonna know that I downloaded it here on the canvas. So what you would have to do is go all the way up to the top and save and just click save project here and see it's saving project saved and then you would x out the entire application and then relaunch the application and then the Cricut uh, canvas would have recognized that you downloaded a font so that's just a little psa there maybe you guys have had that trouble before i know that i have so we have our text selected and i'm just going to stop here and make sure i haven't missed any questions i don't think i have there's one, it's not a question, but it says, I hope I can make this project. Me and uh, Di don't get along. But Tasha, you could definitely find, I know like Amazon and Oriental Tradings have um, like flannel or even colored canvas bags that are small yeah. as well. So you could buy, I mean, obviously you don't even have to dye it. You can just put the, the HTV right on it. Yeah. But if you wanted them to be cute and colorful, then you can get um, pre-colored ones. Or if you're a sewist, you could get some really cute like lightly printed oh for sure uh, fabrics and yeah. make these so oh, that'd be so yeah. cute and easy this looks like you know an easy project oh it for, is yeah you know a sewist that yeah. seems great and also guys if you're wanting to go crazy if you really don't like dye but you kind of want to dip your toes in and see how <coughs> excuse me dip dyeing works you could even have a cotton canvas bag that was black and dip it in bleach and kind of yeah. do the opposite you know how it would take that color out but still give you that same look so think about that too that'd be something fun to do so 
Uh, over on the canvas here, I am going to be using um, all lowercase. So let me go ahead and type this out and see I'm at uppercase now. So there was a question earlier that said, how do you get your text on two lines? So pay attention if you ask that question yep. and you'll see really quickly. So there's, uh, I'm glad Becca brought that up because I totally would have missed that, number one. And number two, there's actually just like surprise surprise everything in design space there's a lot of different ways to do that mm -hmm. so my preferred way is honestly to have one word per text box and build it like that but you guys don't have to you can do it uh, like tic-tac-toe and this font actually has a really nice spacing in between it so i'm just going to leave it like that and then you guys could click click off of it and get another text box for the second line or you could press uh return and if you press return then it throws you down onto that second line, and then you can tap out on the go, just like that. Which that's how I would do yeah. it. Yeah, so that's how Becca yeah. would do it. Uh, I would do it uh, separately because I like to, um, I don't know, because I'm crazy. So uh, now what we'll do is bring this over here, and the first thing I'm gonna do with it like this, if we have done it this way, is ungroup it. So why is I'm gonna ungroup it, and I actually like the spacing, so I'm gonna go right back in here on the first line and attach that together and do the same exact thing on that bottom line, attach it together. And then with my arrow keys, if they'll work today, I'm just gonna arrow key up a bit, uh, maybe just one, yeah, one or two, because I like uh, the spacing there. And then I'm gonna click off of it, drag my mouse over both of them, okay? I hope everybody's following along. Let me know if I'm going too fast, if I need to backtrack on anything, if I need to clarify anything. And then I'm gonna go up to the top layers panel um, on that align tool, and I'm gonna align center horizontally. Now you can see it just moved that bottom um, line there over to the right a little bit uh, because I really wanna make sure that I have these uh, good and even. Whereas if I left it how it was on the text box, it just would not have been even. So once you have that uh, good and aligned, take them both and attach. Now, the reason I'm not a welding is because I might want to change this later. I might want to use this on a different project. And, uh, you know, maybe I want to change something about that. Not like it's hard to retype this, uh, but feel free to weld, feel free to attach, at least attach. Um, and then now what we're going to do is place this on our little um, representation of our little bag here and just make it as big as we want to. So you can unlock it and make it a lot longer. You can make it wider. Just make sure you're not distorting it too much. Um, and again, we don't have to measure anything but our bag in order to place our blank in design space here. Uh, so we don't have to measure our tic-tac-toe on the go, our little quote here, because all we have to do is size it to our bag, which is, you know, really nice. I really love doing that. So depending on where you want it, you can have it fill up the entire space. So you can just have it kind of smaller. And that's the, kind of the theme I was going. I had it like smaller and a little closer to the bottom so that if you actually, you know, drew the drawstring on your bag, you could still read it uh, because it was a little bit down lower. So just something to think about. Again, personal preference, just like a lot of things in design space. So let me know if you guys have any questions about this part here. Um, mm -hmm. Again, really easy stuff here. Uh, this project is not necessarily hard just as much as it is time consuming. So uh, we have that now. And again, we're just going to erase that because we do have this finished one. Now I'm going to take this, erase that, take our circle, erase that because we're done with our X's and our O's and we're done with our text here. So, so now Rachel, that, there is yeah, a question. Sure, uh, the on. fonts available for members, do you have to download each individual font or are they automatically uh, on your computer when you join the membership? Great question. So yeah, yeah Stephanie, you do have to, when you, when you join the membership, you do have to download and install um, each font. Uh, Rachel, you going to show us? Yeah. yeah. Rachel's going to show us over mm -hmm. there. Um, yeah, so you will have to download and install both of those. If that seems scary to you, we also have um, a printable guide that gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. So, we do, we do. Yeah. I mean, we, we're here to make sure that you all have all the information you want. So we have a ton of fonts, all different types of fonts. We have basic fonts, fancy fonts, amazing grids, hand letter fonts, monogram fonts, and script fonts. Really, any type of font you want, we've got it. And if we don't, Give us a little bit and we'll have it. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, all you have to do is click download on each one. And guys, I'm just going to be real with you. I like the hunt, okay? When I am making a project and I am either looking at inspiration from Pinterest or I have like this um, 
this image in my mind, I like hunting for my fonts. If I knew they were all downloaded, that wouldn't be as fun. I, I want to go in here and hunt for my fonts. I want to be excited when I find one I haven't seen before or I find one that I'm excited to use in a certain project. Or guys, one of my favorite things is to go through here and you can, this little heart here, uh, to the left uh, on the bottom of each of these fonts is a little favorite uh, icon. So you can actually go through here and favorite fonts that you want. So if you don't want to download them all right now, uh, but you want to use them later, you find some favorites because we do have a ton of fonts. You can just click that little favorites button right there and favorite as many fonts as you want, which is awesome. Okay. Let there are a couple here. of questions about grids. One, are the grids in the printable guides? And two, what are the grids used for? Okay. So I'm just going to go over this uh, once. Um, we are going to have some really cool videos and stuff all about grids. So grids do come with that yearly membership. We have one already and I'll post a link to that. Let me yeah. Really okay. Quick. So Becca's going to post a link to it so you guys can know all about them. I'm just going to go through them quickly. So grids are a, a, an amazing format for fonts. So it's like fonts 2.0. It's like it helps fonts out. You do have to have fonts to use grids. Um, and you have to have that uh, yearly membership to use grids. But all of these here, everything that's in red is where you guys are able to add text to create amazing quotes, amazing designs. We even have some uh, here, some family name grids, if you can see those, that are uh, like halfway filled in that are really amazing that inspires you guys just to add a last name or uh, an established date or something like that, which is so awesome. So there's really so many perks for that yearly membership. And I mean, they just keep coming. So uh, again, guys, our membership is on sale today, which is incredible. You do get those fonts that we're talking about and those grids. You do get that commercial license that one of our amazing um, viewers, Christy, was asking about, which means you can make money with your machine by selling any and all projects you use with our cut files and fonts. And we give you guys three free online e-courses, uh, which guys is awesome for beginners. If you're a beginner, you will love this. It teaches you how to uh, master design space, how to master the actual uh, cutting machine. And we have one about how to build a business through die cutting, which is all the ins and outs of building a business, how to create one, what to sell things for, tips on pricing, tips on growing a business and things like that. And it's, it's jam packed with a lot of great things for um, any crafter that wants to kind of take it up a notch and start making money. And this is probably my favorite <clears throat> little a way to show you guys just how much you get with that yearly membership and how much you save because you can see the price go down and the amount of uh, what you get go up. So we just got a question about how much is the membership and it is on sale today for $20 off using that code make. Uh, and that is only for our amazing yearly membership. But as you can see here, you pay the least amount of money for the most amount of our resources. So if you want to go ahead and buy that membership, all you have to do is click one of our mini buttons uh, that we have here and be able to um, join. So look, right here's one I want to join. Go ahead and click it and it'll take you right to the checkout page. But do not forget to go all the way to the bottom and enter in that coupon code right here, M-A-K-E. Okay, so once you enter in that coupon code, coupon successfully applied, you can go up here and see how much it was before for 365 days of crafting, how much your discount is, and then how much you'll pay for an entire year of crafting. So that's amazing. That's a really great deal for everything that you guys get. All the commercial licensing, the members only Facebook group, the printable guides, the fonts, the cut files, everything. So. We love our membership. It is an amazing membership. Uh, and of course, for our amazing new members, any uh, membership tier, if you also go to up here to your dashboard, if you're logged in, we have a great beginner start here category over here with lots of uh, videos and inspiration and tips and tricks for you guys. And then over to the right under member resources where you guys can find your printable guides, your PDFs, um, some awesome decal guides here for you guys to be able to use some blade charts here for Silhouette and Cricut, um, iOS guide to teach you guys how to master using your um, iPad for Design Space. We have that Makers Gonna Learn printable guide that Becca was talking about that will teach you guys how to download 
a SVG, download a font, download a PNG, and things like that. So that's got everything you want in it, especially if you guys are a little bit nervous about it. This guy's 12 pages long, which is really, really nice. And then you can go back and here's our Cricut Printable Guide, which is chock full of amazing terminology and you know, what your blade will cut. It's got, um, you know, decal sizing charts and cutting mat charts. So what material can uh, be cut on what mat? Hold up. Yep. Christy said the e-course for starting your business is what got me my first 100 t-shirt order. The oh membership is goodness. so amazing. That's amazing. And wow. that order well paid for your membership, I'm mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow, and that's incredible. That's another thing to keep in mind, guys, is if you do want to take advantage of those, um, those perks like that free commercial license and, you know, build a business through die cutting with that amazing free e-course we give you guys, then you guys can build a business and make back double, triple, quadruple what you even paid for your mm -hmm. membership. So really guys, it pays for itself if, if you have the drive and the passion to be able to get out there and create. And even if you don't want to build a business just yet, it's so worth it anyways, just for all of the amazing resources that you get in the community that you build that members only facebook group has over five thousand like-minded crafters in there that just want to um you know lift you up and give you amazing advice and pat your virtual back for the amazing projects that you've done it's just an amazing community over there so there was a question what time does the summit start i actually asked tanner yesterday because i wasn't sure um, usually he, nine or ten it's not yeah yeah nine, yeah. nine a.m mm -hmm. eastern standard time yep be usually here nine. get your coffee ready get your breakfast ready whatever get with us um i think there was another question let me find it really quick. Oh, 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 yeah. Um, Sherry said, Becca, I think Rachel did this video before you came on board, but I'm hoping you can help me find it. It's the project with your wedding date, engagement date, etc. Do you know what that would be called so I can help her find it? Oh, my gosh. What was um, it? A Was it like a... Customized... Was it a sign or what? Yeah, so I, I think you're talking about the one that said best, day, best days of our lives. And I think it was customized... What, type customized wedding and see what the it pops up it should be like a white sign with a lot of just dates on it okay and some jute along air all the corners let me know if you find it guys i love that project it's in my home it's probably one of my favorites i'm a, I'm, I'm a sucker for anything sentimental yeah, I am and too. i love that project it's gorgeous <laughs> um customized wedding did not yield that okay customized gift try customized gift Gosh, is it customized or personalized? Oh, see, guys? Ooh. Struggle is real. Struggle is real. real. While Becca searches yeah, for that. I'll keep looking for it. If she doesn't find it, I will hunt it down for you. Uh, but the last thing that we have to do, guys, is just build out our actual tic-tac-toe image here. And you might can guess how we're going to do this because this is not a cut file. I'm sure it could be one, but why would we do that when it's so easy to create one in design space? So we're going to go to shapes here, get us a square. Did Tanner do it? Is it this video? That's it. Oh, Tanner, I was I looking Tanner for you. Yeah. Oh, well, it's my project, but you know, yeah. Tanner probably okay. did it, which is hilarious because it was mine and my husband's dates on it, which is funny. But Becca found it. Yay. So all we're going to do, we have a square. doesn't matter what size it is yet. We're going to unlock it. So we're going to click that uh, bottom left little uh, button there and unlock it. And we're going to make it long and skinny. So make it pretty skinny, guys. And once it's, once you like, you know, how it is you can go ahead and click off of it and we're going to lock that okay and now we're going to duplicate it go ahead and duplicate it good then we're going to bring it over a little bit okay bring it over just like this and because i want to make sure we're getting this straight you know as as it goes on i'm going to click both of them and go up to align and i'm going to align center vertically and that's just going to kind of bring those together and make those super straight then guys i'm going to duplicate again and here's a fun trick that I absolutely love. If you hold down the shift key, as you click the rotate button, which is the top right here, you can see it, uh, it's a little bit shadowy and then it's full. You can see me clicking it here, going to and from. So this little rotate button, if you hold down shift while you click that rotate button, it will rotate and look at me messing it up. It will rotate um, like locked if that makes sense so if you're trying to do it like this okay and you want to make it straight well there's really it's going to be hard to make it super straight while you're doing this you know 
uh, yourself. But if we go over here, I'm just erasing it. It's easier just to do this. And if we go over here, we know this one's perfectly straight and we hold down shift as we drag this guy around, he will lock into place for us. So you can see we can move him all around and he's going to lock. So we Wait, know so that how did I not straight. know that trick? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's a cool trick. Also, there was a question. Can you, can you rotate or angle by a specific degree? And you can. You totally can. The, yeah, yeah. Up at the top. You can go up to rotate. Like right now it says 90 degrees. So you can, you can click whatever degree you want. If, if, you know, if that's what you want to do feel free yeah so that's what I normally do I didn't yeah. even know about the other I love that it's cool yeah it's cool so now before I overlap these two to make it easier on me I'm just gonna take these two I'm just gonna weld them guys I'm just gonna just gonna do it so now I'm gonna lay this one here and then duplicate it doesn't really matter where you put him because you're kind of wanting to do this together so then I'm gonna place this one down and I can see I like him want him to be a little bit in. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here. And these look good. So now what I'm going to do is take these and I'm going to go to align. And I'm going to align. Ooh. Align. Which one do I want to align? Center horizontal. Let's see what this does. Perfect. So I'll align center horizontally. Uh, I did weld the other two and I'm going to weld these right now as well. So once you have all that aligned, it looks great. Um, make sure you lock it. You know, you can get super nitpicky with it if you want to. Um, I'm just going to grab both of these and weld them both. And again, guys, um, you guys feel free to do this however you want to do it. Um, you know, we're going to do it our way. Sometimes there's a better way, an easier way. When you're live, you, you don't think usually about the eight different ways you can do it. So if you guys know another way you'd rather do it, feel free to. Uh, this is just the way we're doing it today. So then you can go ahead and size this. And as you can see, because I'm just so smart, I went ahead and erased our square that we needed before I even sized this last piece here. So don't get ahead of yourself like me. So I want to go ahead and resize that. I think it was, I think our width was 4.5. And our height was 4.75. Pretty sure that was it. Let me bring this in just to make sure. Arrange, send to front. Yep, that was it. That's the size. So I'm going to bring this in. Arrange, send to front. And now just kind of line this up. Again, this one that I have pre-made, as you can see, it looks a little bit uh, thicker. So if that's what you want to use, uh, you can do that. Uh, or you can make your line thicker, you know, but ours a little is a little bit skinnier here. And I'll tell you why the benefit to making them skinnier is because the circles will fit better. Uh, our little wooden circles will fit better in there if it's skinnier. So go ahead and size that to your little um, uh, sack there, the bottom of your sack. And once you like that, guys, all we have to do is make it. So we're done with that. We're done with all of this. Uh, so now what you're going to want to do is click make it. I think they're all the same color, so make sure they are. Sometimes if you bring a circle or a shape in there and you start using it, it'll actually be a different color, like a, a charcoal gray. So I did have to make all of these the same color, but I'm pretty sure they are the same color now. So for our little um, attached Kayla font, again, you can attach it, you can weld it, just make sure that it is together. Um, Carol said, love the Kayla font, just downloaded it and I'm going to dream up a project so I can use it. Carol, that is amazing. I love that we're on here already inspiring you guys to use these amazing fonts. Uh, now we're going to click make it and we are using black HTV. So we're going to mirror it, make sure you mirror it. And now if you're like me and you're a little bit nervous about these X's and these O's being too close to each other, you can go through here and, you know, spread them out a little bit and make yourself a little more comfortable with cutting them out because you will have to, of course, attach these uh, separately. So make sure that it's not just too much for you to handle. Uh, so we're just going to kind of spread these out. And uh, just because I thought, thank goodness, that I was going to be rushed for time, it's already almost been an hour, if you can believe it. I already pre-cut all this out. So uh, we're going to select iron on and leave it on default pressure depending on your blade and then cut all of these out. But for the sake of today, I'm not gonna cut these out. I already have. So please forgive me if you are a little disappointed at not hearing or seeing the Cricut cut. So Rachel, Miss Tasha said, I want to do the segments, but I have to see if I'm going to be available those days. So you might not have been here, Miss Tasha, when I was talking about it beforehand, but you actually do not have to be available on days when the summit is um, 
here. So uh, Becca, if you want to throw out the link for the amazing um, Summit Passport as well, we do have a Summit Passport link that will give you guys access to the Spring, Summer, and Fall Summit. And the beauty of those is just as I was saying, you actually don't have to be in attendance the actual Summit weekends in order to get in on the giveaways, in order to get in on the classes or anything like that. So uh, for a while after the Summit, you can actually go back with those links that you guys will be emailed uh, the days before the Summit and uh, replay the entirety of our days, my Becca and Tanner's chit chat. Um, but a little while after that, you guys will be emailed the HD versions of all of the classes. So once you buy a ticket, you get your class, you get access to the live stream and everything that we have that day. Uh, and then you have that forever. So you have those HD versions of those classes as long as you live. You can look at them as many times as you'd like. So do not worry if you are uh, gone or out of town or something comes up. So we love our Summit Passports because we give you guys a bundled price for all three summits for the entire year. And again, you don't have to worry about if you're actually going to be there or not. But we do love it when you guys are there and you guys get to join us. It's a great excuse to say no. I'm not doing anything this weekend except crafting or hanging out and watching these amazing projects. Uh, it's it's good to say no every, every once in a while to, you know, say yes to you, Tom. So definitely consider doing that. We do love the um, summits. And I think, how will we know when it starts, Miss Elaine? I think you, is she talking about the summit? I think so, yeah. So you'll know beforehand, uh, we will give you guys supply lists. We will also give you guys special secret links to the live streams prior each day to the summit. So you will not be notified about that until March 20th. And then you will get the secret links and things like that about everything you need to know what times they will be. Uh, we have um, really cool breaks and a lunch break in, you know, through the day. So it's really like an, an actual conference. It's really cool. Uh, you guys will a, be able to take breaks to refill that coffee cup or to let your pups out or to check on your husbands. And then we'll have a chunk of uh, not a big chunk, but like 30, 45 minutes of a lunch break for you guys to munch on some lunch and get recharged for the rest of the afternoon of Amazing Crafting. So let me know if you guys have any other questions about the Amazing Summit or the membership because the yearly membership is on sale today um, for National Craft Month, $20 off using the code MAKE at checkout. So check that out. So, okay. Well, we've done everything in design space. I have pre-cut out a lot of things and I have, thank goodness I did that guys, you know? So I also have um, this guy cut but not weeded. So I'll actually show you guys uh, how to weed a little bit of this today, which is good. So I'm just taking this, I already cut off the excess here. Now I'm gonna take a little Cricut tool and just weed some of this off. And I didn't even realize down here is excess too. So I'm so sorry that I wasted that, but just weed away here and that looks great. So while we're weeding, it's a, a good time if you've already painted your little circles to preheat your easy press. We have not, well, we have some pre-painted, don't freak out, but I'm also gonna show you guys uh, how you can paint a couple of those uh, on the live as well. I wanted to give you guys as much as I could, but I also wanted to prepare just in case it took a little bit longer to do the design space, design space portion and things like that. So once all of this is weeded, which was that not easy, we're just gonna remove this from the mat here. And so well, I'll just leave that on the mat as well as all these other ones. So here's some other O's. Here's a line of little X's here. And then here's our little tic-tac-toe on the go. You look how thin that is, guys. Like that's some thin letters, okay? But they end up looking really cute because here's the finished one. Like that's really cute, you know? So we're gonna set all that to the side here and we're gonna get our little paint chips. And I did wanna give it an awesome PSA because you guys know we love to use Americana chalky finish paint and this is the paint that we use most of the time here in the studio. But one fateful day, I chose to use this folk art acrylic paint because I like that you could use less coats than the deco art chalky finish. I mentioned this in a live with Tanner, but I wanted to show you guys this stuff right here 
does not like HTV. You cannot iron on anything after you paint whatever it is with this right here. So keep that in mind. This is a great paint. Uh, it goes on really thick. It dries really well. It's pretty chalky. It's matte here. I love this paint. But since we use HTV on wood so often, it just doesn't work, doesn't work. So make sure you're using a good paint. We love our chalky finish. Okay, so here's our little wood pieces here. I've already got out some that are the size that we are looking for here. So here's the size we like. Here's the tag to our little sacks if you wanted the tag to those. And then here's our little wood pile tag. Show, show you guys that. Okay, I'm gonna glove up again. Here's the pack to the die. Yep, love that. I ripped the top of it off. I thought it was tulip though, and Becca confirmed it, thank goodness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we're gonna paint two or three of these little circles, uh, but I have some finished right here for us, uh, already painted, but what we love to use for things like this is a little pouncer. And even more than that, we have found that if you guys go to the Dollar Tree, you will find a pack of like 100 of these little makeup sponges here for a, a dollar, you know, and these are great for uh, pouncing things like this. So if we have our little paint over here, we can open them up. And I like to use the top here. There's so much paint right here in the lid. I know it's white, so sorry guys. Uh, so I love to use the paint on the lid here. Uh, so we're gonna take our little pouncer, pounce it in there. And this isn't quite like um, stenciling. You don't have to worry about removing a lot from your uh, pouncer when you do this. We're just painting it. So you can just go on here and paint around it. I like to paint the edges of mine first. So if I was um, doing all of these at one time, this actually needed two coats per side. So what I did was I took one, okay? I went around the edges really quickly. You can see I'm just like rolling it with my finger here. And then I just held on to the sides that I just painted. I know it's kind of crazy. And I just did this. Okay, and if you do a light enough coat, it will um, dry pretty fast and only really needed two coats. So you just flip that around then, get a little bit more paint and do another coat. And then uh, I just set these down to dry. I know it's a little bit risky setting it on like a wet side because it's all wet, you know, but if you set it down, you let it dry, get a heat gun, heat set it. You can just about repaint them as soon as you're done painting the last one because there are 10 of them. So you will go through a process of painting these guys um, and you think it might go a little slow, but it actually goes fast because once you're done, if you've heat set these, then you're ready to go again. So again, just paint it. You can paint the edges first. You can paint the edges last. It's what, whatever floats your boat. You know, we're all different crafters here. That was just the method that I chose. Uh, yeah. So just paint one side, paint the other side, get a little more paint. Don't be afraid of the paint. And we have a little heat gun there that we use to heat set these guys. But once you're done with that, all of them, then they should look pretty and matte and solid, much like much like these guys. So these are pretty and solid and white and they're both sides are painted really well. So now once you have these painted, once you have them dried and because we're ironing on these, I would recommend letting these dry for quite some time. Overnight's preferred, a couple of hours is fine. I think I pushed it to the limit with uh, the ones that I had finished here and just did about an hour in between, but I did heat set them for a really long time. So just think about that, you know, wherever, you're needing them if you need them in like an hour, or if you're going on a quick vacation, or if you need them in a week, you know, or something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and preheat our Easy Press. Um, let me see, I'm gonna do the first setting, which is technically the one you're supposed to use for wood. So I'm gonna let that, uh, let that sit there. And I got a question here, what's the name of the paint? Becca's answering it. Um, That's okay. No, yeah, Becca's answering it. I'll show you as well, just in case. Uh, you want to know. Uh, it's Americana Deco Art uh, Chalky Finish. So we love this. It's a great paint. We have used it for years. Tanner and Courtney actually used to have a partnership with them and we got into their paint and their chalky finish is amazing. They have some outdoor paint, some color stains and stuff, but their chalky is where our hearts lie. That's what we have always bought. So it covers really well. It does cover well. So here's our little chips. Look at them. They're cute. So once we have our chippies, we have our Easy Press preheating. We have our Easy Press mat here. Have that right there. And you guys might need a Teflon sheet. You might not. It's totally personal preference. I'm gonna bring this in here. 
And one thing that I love to do is go in here with my craft knife and cut in the middle of these. So I'm gonna cut in the middle of these X's here because I'm just gonna pick them up one by one and, um, you know, place them onto my little circles. Or, pl yeah, place them onto my wood circles. So I'm just gonna cut these one. And I'm just gonna iron on a couple of them. I am glad that I had this prepped. Just gonna cut this. I know what you guys are thinking. Rachel, you're cutting on your mat. Is that, are you not crazy? Well, I probably am crazy, but it's not because I'm cutting on my mat. Uh, it's really <laughs> fine to cut on your mat. It doesn't really hurt your mat. You can, um, you can cut on it. The best thing, the best advice I can give is to make sure that you just know your pressure. Cause guys, I've snapped mats. You've snapped mats. Don't act like you haven't. It's easy to do, but you, you'll know how hard you're cutting. You know, it's all about the pressure there. How many chips do we need, Miss Tasha? So Becca, make sure I'm doing my math right. The maximum nine of each, right? Um, uh, well, it's every other. So maximum, uh, I'm like the most that you would put down would be five. So right. maximum of five of each. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, five yeah. of each. Yeah. So that's what I've made is five of each. Right. So you can make <clears throat> so five. nine total. Nine total. Yeah, nine total. But, but so yeah. I've just made, I guess, one extra just because you know. Well, no, because more. depending on who starts, if X's start first, then they could have five. If O's start first, then they could have five. So, oh, uh, you know, the, the max that you can put down is nine, but you could ten. Okay. Yeah. Well, you did I'm good. So you did right. So glad. Looky there. I did something right, guys. I'm, I'm impressed. Look at you, you math whiz. Oh, I know. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to do a couple of our chips first, and then we're going to iron on our cute little um, bags. So have our X's and our O's here. We're going to take a chip and lay it down. And I'm going to get in closer for us here so you guys can see what's going on. And then lay a little X down. Now, one thing about these X's that I appreciate is that they're they're not perfect. And I want I wonder if you guys can see what I mean here. They're a little it's a little wonky on some of the ends of these X's and I love the personality that it gives us. So, I usually like that. I think it's cute. So, I'm going to lay him down and place him however you want to. Um, just make sure he's like even in the top and bottom and everything like that. Center him up as best you can. But guys, this is a little tic-tac-toe game for your child or to keep in your car. This is not for the Queen of Buckingham. I mean, you don't have to make it perfect. So, this guy is nice and preheated. We're just going to lay him on there, okay? We're not going to move him. We're going to leave him as is. Um, I have no idea how long to leave them on here. I really should count. I have an Apple Watch that I could, you know, have a timer on very easily. But for some reason, guys, lazy crafters unite. It just happens that I don't set a timer. So now you can remove this if it got stuck on your heat press like it did mine, that's fine. And oftentimes on wood, especially on smaller projects like this, sometimes you won't see bubbles and that's okay. So uh, let this cool for a little while, which is so small, you know, like I can hold it and everything like that, it's not that hot. So let it cool just a little bit and then you can peel this off and reveal your little chip. He's so cute. So we have one chip done. I'm gonna add another chip down, grab us a little O, Lay down our O. The O's were the hardest to center for me because I'm a little bit anal. I know that's a shock. But once you have it how you like it, go ahead and lay your easy press down again. You don't have to give a lot of pressure. Again, it's on the very first heat setting, which is uh, 300, which is recommended for HTV on wood. Um, I would say, what, 10 seconds? Leave it on here for 10 seconds and uh, let it cool for about the same amount of time. And then just peel it off and then you're good to go. There's your little X here. He's cute. Then, yeah, let him cool. And you could start getting cocky and wanting to use um, a bigger easy press and do multiple at the same time. I would highly recommend not doing that. You really don't want to mess anything up. And let's see, um, what fonts for the letters? Miss Pam, we are using the font uh, Kayla for our little... Uh, quote here that says tic-tac-toe on the go and we're using the font opal for our little um, x's and o's on our paint chips here so little o little x cute cute so you're just gonna call you know, i was about to say copy and paste i guess you kind of are you're just gonna copy and paste that on all these guys i mean um, essentially you are <laughs> essentially i don't know what's wrong with me guys too much talking i guess so center it up let your grease press down, 10 seconds, just keep going. This is a very good, easy, mindless thing you could do while watching a TV show 
or listening to some music, something like that. You know, it's not very uh, difficult to do. Like I said, it's not like this is a hard craft. It's just time consuming, which is fun. There's nothing wrong with that. And these are super cute. If you know somebody who's going on a vacation, you could do one Disney World themed if you wanted to. Um, I don't know. You know, get crazy. Rachel, what are your thoughts about like laying all 10 of those out, putting your HTV on it and using a big heat press to do all of them at one time? You were probably typing because I just addressed that. Oh, no. And I said I would highly not recommend it. Because <laughs> I was typing. <laughs> that's okay. Listen, I do the same I'm thing. I'm the worst for tuning because things out, guys. I wonder it's if horrible. you guys can see this. Let me show you. Do we see They're how bowed. this is bowed? Yeah. Do we see? So if we laid all of these out, and good Lord, and we tried to place these tiny HTV squares on all these and hoping they won't move a single I was going to say, they would likely move. Then, um... You know what? If you get that down, more power to you. I want to know your secret. But where we are using wood, and it is, some of them are bowed, as you can see here. Some it, of them are pretty flat. Some of them are bowed. Just depends. Wood is wood, just like if that. If they were all super flat, it might be all right. It might be all right. But because... You, you do it and let us know. Not yeah, you, Rachel. Sure. Yeah, sure. Let us know how that goes, because I am curious. I'm sure you are, Becca. I don't doubt that. I don't doubt it a bit. It's, I, I'm curious to know as well. So, repeat that on all of them. And then you will have um, all these cute little chippies that are done and ready for you, ready to be added to your bag. And something that I chose not to do, but you guys could totally do, is uh, lay all these out um, on a poster board. Take them outside or take them in your garage and spray them with polyurethane on the front and in the back in like an hour. Um, and it'll give them a little bit of a glossy finish. And heaven forbid, I really don't think it will. But if they get a little bumped and knocked around in the car while they're in their little bag, um, then it'll kind of seal them up and make them a little bit more sturdy over time. But again, the HTV is not going anywhere. The paint is good and uh, it's chalky finish. It's great. So we love that. Moving on. Becca, have I missed anything? Mm, what's the name of your little press? Like, it's the Easy Press Mini, but I named him Peanut. Like, is that the route we're going? Is that what they mean? Well, you covered both. So. Okay, perfect. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, this can is the Easy Press Mini. you iron on foam instead cannot of wood? You iron on foam. So, here's the problem with foam. And I, I assume it's like, you know... I picture styrofoam. I don't know what kind. No, like the craft foam. foam, like over in at Hobby Lobby, um, where you a lot of kids' craft projects are. You might actually be able to, but not like styrofoam. I feel like it would burn instantly. Yeah, let me look. I'm going to do a little search. Becky's going to do a little research. Uh, so, sorry, I didn't even tell you guys. I clicked it up a notch for our, uh, our little tote bag here. So, because I have already ironed on this guy, on this side. I'm just going to finish this guy off and iron on our quote on this side and then iron on our tic-tac-toe um, piece here on another one. So I'm going to be able to show you guys how to do every single bit of this in today's live. So I'm going to take this and lay it down. And again, guys, if you want to be super precise, you can get out that tape measure or you could just lay it down and go with it because, again, this is a child's craft that's going in your car. Not meaning you should not put as much heart and soul into it as any other craft. Just saying, feel it out. You know, feel it out. So, got him on there. He Speaking looks great of that to me. topic, I just want to bring up. Bring it up. The print, I did it. If you guys didn't catch it, I did a um, video that was posted over the weekend on how to calibrate your machine. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Here we go. And basic, I showed a before and after. Like before a calibrated machine project and what it looked like after and just said, guys, basically you step up the quality of your project by calibrating and just making it look very professional. And there was a comment. Here we go. That said, what's wrong with homemade? <laughs> um, not everybody wants to sell their projects. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to heat this, guys. Keep going, Becca. So so here's my thought. Don't you guys want your projects, even if you're not selling them, your homemade projects or projects that you're giving to friends or you're displaying in your house, don't you want them to be perfect and look professional even though they are handmade? I think it's way more of a compliment to, to know that something's homemade but looks professional. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know. I know that. I just half want the your stuff... feedback. Am I taking that out of context? Is there another way to take that? I don't know. And listen, guys, I'll be real, okay? 
a lot of things that were really hard to notice when 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 it's when it's virtual okay mm -hmm. when someone's not sitting in front of you telling their side of the story or their opinion it's really hard to uh understand the way that they meant to say it so you know i'm gonna stay out of this one um personally but go nuts there yeah, so I'm just curious i think i saw something do you get your supplies for this project from amazon miss Susie? we got i think all of these supplies from hobby lobby this uh -huh. time i think so too but not gonna lie we get 90% of our projects products from Amazon. So we heated him up. It's so thin. These letters are so small. They did not need a lot of time. So I should be able to peel this off. No problem. And it looks great. So that's on there. Perfect. So we have him done. He's got tic-tac-toe on the go. Flip him around back. Really cute. And now I'm going to grab our other baggie here. So here's a fresh bag. So here's what you would do from the beginning. So it's crinkled from the dryer really bad. Go ahead and take that easy press that's preheated. And we're going to iron out these darn wrinkles. Or at least some of them. I kind of really like the look of it being crumpled, you know. But it was just too crumpled to even iron on um, beforehand. So just iron him. Flip him over. Do the same with the back. Just enough to where you can iron him on properly. And I like the color of this bag too, you know. It looks looks imperfect. Mm -hmm. Love him. So then we're going to get our little tic-tac-toe design. What, what is this called? Outline? I don't know what this is called. What, whatever this is. It's a hashtag. The hashtag. <laughs> get your hashtag and lay him down. This one's a bit easier to... Um, Align because it takes up a lot of space here. So again, you can get out your measuring tools. You can make it perfect if you want, but it sits in such a small project. It looks great to me. So again, you don't need your Teflon sheet for this. The only reason you might have needed it was for the wood, but you know, I don't, I didn't need it. Rich, do you know how big those bags are? They are, let me see my little, little thingies right here. Five inches by six inches. Five by six. There was a question, can you cut craft foam on your Cricut? And the answer is yes, you yep. absolutely can. You can. I Glitter, think it has craft, craft foam, foam and setting. regular, it does. Yeah, yeah, sweet. Yeah. So I'm just heating this, guys. It doesn't need to be heated for very long. Again, I, I wish I knew how long I was heating this. But really, until I see bubbles and feel confident. So I'm seeing some bubbles and I'm feeling confident. So I'm just going to place that to the side. I'm actually going to turn him off. He beeps at me, guys. And then we're going to let him cool just a little bit. And then peel this guy up because, again, it's not that hot. And that stuck great. Okay, so here's one. Uh, here's another one. And here's the one we finished today. He looks cute. So now, guys, all you have to do is take your little chips here and stuff them in the bag. Stuff them in there. Stuff them in the bag. And there you go. Like, look how cute this is. So there's one. Here's another one that you can make. We have this one that's, again, uh, kind of like ombre. This one that is, um, you know, angled, has been dipped out an angle. This one that's kind of uh, tie-dye. Whatever way you want to do this, it ends up really, really cute. So this is a great little thing that you guys can take with you guys on vacation for your kiddos. This would be really cute in an Easter basket. Easter is coming up. This would be super cute in an Easter basket. Just to recap, guys, the fonts that we used were Kayla and Opal, and you can only get these with our yearly membership, which just happens to be on sale because it's National Craft Month. So use the code MAKE, M-A-K-E, when you check out to be able to take advantage of all the fonts, plus um, so many more perks for yearly members and perks that every other membership tier gets because yearly members get everything. Everything. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. It's so cute. It is cute. What's everybody saying, Becca? Um, more pressure to come up with a good Easter project for a classmate. Ooh. Although I really think this is a great Easter project. If you customize this project with each class member's name on it, that's pretty stellar. That is pretty stellar. Yeah, I think I this say. is a really cute project. But I'll be thinking of other things as well. So um, put a bunny butt on it. Nothing's cuter yeah, than a bunny butt. Yeah, so cute. You could put a pom-pom for its actual bunny tail. Oh. You'd hot glue a pom pom on a there. itty bitty mini one. Oh, oh I love so bunny cute. butts. So Sharon yeah. love love loves it. <gasps> oh, you well, actually, I assume here. that's what she said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sharon love love loves it. She yeah. love love loves it. Love it. It's so cute. So the backs, of course, you can lay it down. 
play with it. This is great for, I don't know, if you take the kids to the park to a little picnic, something, if they get um, a little bit, you know, antsy easily. You could even, these might be good to take, honestly, to a restaurant if you're trying to do like the whole no screens thing and trying to keep your kids, you know, just invested in what's going on around them. This is a great alternative to taking tablets or a ton of toys into a restaurant, something small like this. It'll keep their attention. At Cracker Barrel, if you guys know what Cracker Barrel is, um, my husband's little cousins love that little that little oh, the game. pegboard yeah yeah that little yeah. game at cracker barrel i mean they can play it the entire time it's hilarious so same concept here except you can take it anywhere not just cracker barrel so yeah two things cute. one pat said i'd like to know where to find the bag project that was filled for valentine's day and it was clear so pat are you talking about the little mason jar that with the clear baggie and the worms or just the regular party bag that had um a print and cut valentine card and candy in it let us know because there was one, no video for that it was literally just a print yeah. and cut Once a and print then you and cut, put it and in then a the bag one becky created was a an amazing project that she took like three cut files and a couple of fonts and did a lot of yeah. amazing things in the design space so depending on which one you want to make there's a video on one and then one is a simple print and cut so and the other question is very important rachel we yes. name our vehicles like the easy press do you Everyone here at Maker's Gonna Learn Everyone has a car with a name. Yeah. So Tanner's um, is Tiffany. Courtney's, she has a Subaru Forester, and her name is Frankie the Forester. Um, they copied me because I had a car. My very first car was a Nissan Maxima, an 01 Nissan Maxima, which I still she holds my heart. And way back then when I was 15, still had a learner's permit, I named her Maxine. So she was Maxine the Maxima. Okay. So original. Well, then they started with the, with the, what is it? Rhymy names, but it, it's the cutest thing ever. So I don't judge. So I have, um, Maxine the Maxima and Jessa the Jetta. She's a Volkswagen Jetta. So yeah. I mean, I've listen. had nine vehicles. And every one of them has had a name. I don't know what it is about mm -hmm. it. I don't you know You have to what talk to them. You have to encourage them. Listen. Like, oh, it's cold, buddy. Let's, uh, you know, you can do it. Just you a couple more bottles. Up, you know, go up a hill when yeah. they're not wanting to. Yeah. Or, Listen, you, yeah. can, you can do it, Maxine. Yeah. Listen, she was old one. She, she's, she's pretty old. Yeah. I was telling uh, my husband yesterday, I can actually get antique tags on her next year which is hilarious. But yeah, so we love to name her. Oh, please do that. I want to <laughs> because I don't drive her often and her tags are dead right now, which is bad. I don't drive her though, so don't come at me. That is hysterical. I, but I can get antique tags on my, my first car, but I won't sell her. I refuse. I love her way too much. She well, almost, and you, 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 you may have said it. You have to drive so many, like so few miles in yeah, order to do yeah, it. Yeah, so and if, like it would be perfect because you literally live a mile away. Yeah, so yeah. I could commute to work in Maxine because she's, so Pat Elderly. said it was the project that I made. Um, yeah, so that so is I'm an amazing Valentine's. Linking project. it right now yeah. for you. Pat. She'll post it down below. But guys, be on the lookout for it. I love this. I love the chitter chatter. I love. You have to name your car to keep it going, Tasha. Exactly. I swear I believe it. Okay, I believe they it. They perform better. I talk to her, especially the Maxima when she, you know, before I got uh, Jessa because she was she was going down and, and oh. I was like, come on, Maxine, you can do just a couple more miles. Just get me home, you know? But uh, she she is worth way much more to me than if I had ever sold her. So she's just going to sit there for a long time. My first car. <laughs> Have I told you this? No. <laughs> okay, so my family is big, and we've always had vans. And we're not talking minivans. We're talking like eight passenger or 13, 15 passenger vans. So I learned to drive in a 15 passenger van but my first vehicle was my That's mother's cool. and it was a safari van that was teal mm -hmm. and it was it I'm was just something this in my head and its name was rondale <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> and it was so big Ain and i shared it my <laughs> sister and i shared it and <laughs> We would like, we played soccer and basketball and all this stuff. And of course it was a massive vehicle. So all of our friends would jump in it and we'd drive around, but we played soccer. And so our soccer bags would get thrown in the back and man, they stunk so bad. And then like, you know, just random like McDonald's bags and whatnot, Absolutely, they'd not? get thrown in the back. One day we found a rotten tomato in the back when we finally broke down and cleaned it out. <clears throat> 
good times in yes. that van. Yes. And I've not driven one since because yes. I was scarred. What 16-year-old kid? Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, I was very grateful to have a vehicle. Right, like, yeah. any vehicle is better than mine. Yeah. But what 16-year-old girl wants a massive yeah. till van? None. No, I, I learned. So there's that. I learned on a on a minivan before I took my driver's okay. test. I learned mm-hmm. on a minivan yep. to, to drive a little bit. Uh, her name, her name was the Big Green Weenie because she <laughs> <laughs> she was she was a, a big it was a Nissan something. It was like 1998. It was so old. Okay, the left passenger door didn't open. Whenever we would turn right. Only turn right, all the interior lights would come on <laughs> when we would turn right. Okay, listen, that van was hilarious. Hilarious. Uh, the big green weenie. The big green weenie, yes. Oh, yes. it's so good. The big old rolling turd coming through. and it. Rachel out there riding dirty on those Tennessee streets. That's how we do it in Morristown. <laughs> Let me tell you, thank goodness I live like... 30 seconds. I can't away. right now. Guys, I'm but crying. This is the best. It was a big green weenie. And that's uh, what, like, you know, with the, the gear shift right here, and you couldn't see anything, and it, it smelled bad, and one of the doors wouldn't open. And, and then it'd be night. Okay, Dari would be coming home from church on a Wednesday night, and then Mom would turn right, and all the interior lights would turn on like a <laughs> disco party. Hilarious, guys. Hilarious. And then I got my... Uh, my maximum, it was my aunt's car. So she's been in the family forever. And I was spoiled rotten. I got my license, guys. It, she's she's a V6 and I went I went to it. People were just texting my mother yelling at me because I was apparently ripping the roads and going. I can believe that. I'm so shocked I've never gotten a ticket in my life. What? How? I've only gotten pulled over once and it was because my husband wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Idiot. Yep. Not my fault, though. I, it's not my fault. Yeah. Um, no. I think I've gotten... Th- I don't remember if I've gotten two or three. I've gotten pulled over several, several, several many times. But I've talked my way out of lots of them. See, I couldn't. I would I would be <clears throat> so nervous that they would probably think I had drugs in the car. Like, that's how s- nervous I would be acting. They'd probably be like, Miss Langston, get out. I know you're hiding something. Like, where is it at? And I'd be like, I'm just nervous. I was so nervous the one time I got pulled you over like because You would, like, your husband. guts. You Listen, would. you're going to die. I got so nervous when I got pulled over for the first time in my life, when I was married, like, a year ago, that when the dude asked me for my license or registration, I handed him my registration and my credit card. <laughs> I did. I did. I was only ever nervous when I got pulled over because then I would have to tell my dad. So once I got married, I got married really young. And then after that, it wasn't so bad. When I'm I got still pulled not over, past, I just had to pay it. I'm still not past Rondale. Rondale. I'm still not past that. Rondale. Gosh, guys, I'm so sorry that it's been like so long for this live stream, but this chat is hilarious. I makes me feel so good. It's just, it's so funny to get to talk to you guys. So you guys like our family. So I hope that we haven't bored you. I hope that everyone who just cared about the craft has already went and gone somewhere else. But you know, the real peeps are here to stay and listen to our car's names and yeah, I love it. the awkwardness of us getting pulled over. But guys, I hope that you guys have an amazing Monday. We will be back tomorrow with you guys. Actually, Becca and Tanner will be here tomorrow to make something really cool. The conversation won't be as funny though. No, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Just kidding. We're amping up for it. Yes, <clears throat> yes. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Go ahead and get your yearly membership at uh, Makers and Learn using that code MAKE at checkout, M-A-K-E, and get 20 bucks off. Um, Yeah, so I don't think there's any more questions. Probably just, yeah, I just see a lot of hilarious little comments. <laughs> you guys are great. But have a wonderful day, guys, and we'll see you later. See ya. Bye.